Chrysler Plymouth dealer now. When intelligent individuals have a chance to win $100,000, it changes their behavior. Don't miss the $100,000 Pyramid tonight at 6.30 on TV 11. Twin Cities' fastest-growing television news. News 11 with Paul Majors, Kirsten Lindquist, Jeff Passelt on sports, and meteorologist Paul Douglas. The 25th Space Shuttle mission and... A nation mourns remembering the loss of seven aviation pioneers and the beliefs they stood for. One year ago today, Americans sat glued to their television, shocked and disbelief as the country's worst space disaster unfolded before our eyes. Good afternoon. John and Kirsten will join us from the Winter Carnival a little bit later. But first, none of us will ever forget it. The date, January 28, 1986. The time, 10.38 in the morning. Seven astronauts died when the Challenger exploded, a sight we've all seen played over and over on television. They set out to discover the unknown. Risk was a factor, but not one they dwelled on. The quest to learn superseded all else. In Concord, New Hampshire, the hometown of Krista McAuliffe, students at the high school where she taught mourned the loss of their teacher. The governor of New Hampshire received a portrait of McAuliffe. Officials in Georgia this afternoon had a very special observance for the Challenger 7. A monument was unveiled, remembering the astronauts who died on board the Challenger one year ago. The memorial was also in honor of the three astronauts who died on board Apollo 1 20 years ago this week. But nowhere was the message of the day more evident than at Cape Canaveral. Tracy Lyons of our Washington Bureau heads up a team report on how thousands gathered to remember the astronauts with silent thoughts at the Cape and here in the Twin Cities. One year later, as the sun rose over Kennedy Space Center, the only sound was the ticking of the countdown clock, a faceless clock that kept no time. One year later, the launch pad stood shrouded in fog and empty. One year later, at the exact moment the Challenger was launched, the clock was set and the flag was slowly lowered to half-staff. NASA employees were asked to remember. It's most appropriate that you join with me in 73 seconds of silence in remembrance of the crew members of Challenger. The official remembrance was by no means the only one. In the town surrounding Kennedy Space Center, the people who live in the shadow of the launch pad consider the Challenger crew as family and they remembered them accordingly. And so when a tear may fall, it is not just a tear of sadness, but a tear mixed with gladness, because the dream is yet alive. Ten miles from the Cape, the residents of Titusville gathered in a small park to remember. At a spot called Astronauts Plaza, they placed wreaths on bronze plaques bearing the names of the Challenger crew. They lowered their flag to half-staff, and each carried a very personal memory of that day one year ago. When we seen it go up, we kind of felt like there's something wrong. Then all of it exploded, and everybody just like faded. It's still uh, almost as if it had just happened, you know. It's, uh, you never forget. Ken Speak has a report on what Minnesota students have learned since the shuttle tragedy. 1038, we're going to have 73 seconds of silence to uh, the memory of the Space Shuttle Challenger crew. Now, it was an already solemn occasion for Jeff Plymouth's sixth graders. Many of them have been right here in this same classroom last year, watching on television, watching the first teacher ride Challenger into space. Today, they thought and wrote, figuring pushing a pencil on the paper could give focus to their thoughts and then they shared their feelings. It was sad. Why did it have to happen? If only we could do it over the right way. I think it did feel sad that um, the Challenger did blow up. But I think it should just keep going. I really feel sad and scared that someone else would go up there and get blown up. Then it was time to think about Challenger that for 73 seconds one year ago seemed to be flying so well about Krista McAuliffe, who wanted to teach from Challenger, whose lesson reaffirmed how dangerous a mission space exploration can be. Ken Speak, News 11.
you're going down a road behind the wheel of a new Dodge Dakota. It's the first true mid-size pickup ever made. Inside, room for three, and with four-wheel drive and a V6, the Dakota 4x4 doesn't shy away from hard work. Cross into Dakota territory. Dodge Dakota, the new state of the American truck. Oh, miserable cold. Neocitrin is strong medicine for that nasty cold. It's hot and lemony, too. You'll feel better real soon. New Neocitrin cold medicine. A little warmth for your miserable cold. It takes four leading granola bars to get the same amount of fiber as in one new Schwartel High Fiber Granola Bar. Naturally good. Naturally sweet. No sugar added, and four times the fiber of other bars. All in one honey-sweetened blend of cereals, fruit, and 20% natural fiber. Four times more than other bars. New Schwartel High Fiber Granola Bars. Go settle for less. All over America, it happens. Unreported stains. Stains they don't tell you about. Stains that go right into your dryer where they could be set for life. But add this bleach to your detergent and you have a strong second line of defense to catch many unreported stains and remove them before it's too late. So if your family doesn't report every stain, rely on this. Unreported stains can't get by biz. How would you describe Fresh Chef seafood pasta salad? Mmm, it's incredible. Fresh Chef salads, fresh taste, in the dairy case. You're watching K-A-R-E, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Time now to head out to the St. Paul Winter Carnival. John Bachman and Kirsten Lindquist are at the News 11 Ice Desk in Rice Park with the latest on all the festivities for us, folks. A lot of activities. Have you noticed, too, Kirsten, that the light is lasting a little bit longer each day? It it's certainly been. has. Yeah. It's, it's quite a nice day out here. Paul, we sure do miss you. Yeah, we do. And before Talk you leave you us, Paul, day. before you take off, we got one other thing for you. I'm, you can't forget, I'm sure, how much you like the Winter Carnival song. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, well, we've arranged that... Uh, we want you to hear it again, actually. You well, we spent crazy. hours and hours on the phone today, Paul, and we talked to the songwriters. We talked them into coming up here and performing that song just for you a cappella. Yeah. So we want to present you now with Steve Grimm, his wife, Colleen Ray, and their three children, 11-year-old Trey, 8-year-old Jennifer, and 21-month-old Reed. All of them. Okay, a cappella. Sort of the King family here. <laughs> Loyalty, the winter fun, parade and special ball. And all of the excitements in the city of St. Paul. Yes, this winter enchantment is here at this wonderful time of the year. At the carnival, winter carnival, winter carnival of St. Paul. There's a magical feeling around and good spirits and laughter are found at the carnival. Winter Carnival, Winter Carnival of St. Paul. Bum, 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 bum. All right, now that, you got to admit, that was great. That very nice, it really was, heard. that was very nice of them to do that. Although I must admit, to me, it looks like you're trying to fool me. To me, that looks a little bit like Bill Carlson with a beard from Channel 4. <laughs> no, 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 And no, that no, girl no. looked a little bit like Ruth Spencer. No, wrong, Paul. Oh, couldn't wrong, be. Wrong. No, it wasn't. No, it was really no, them. No. Well, we're glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, that was very nice of them. <laughs> Thank you, you very later. much. We'll talk to you later. So long. Well, treasure hunters think they're getting pretty close to finding the Winter Carnival medallion. Yeah, and as Amy Powell reports, lots of people showed up at Como Park today, armed with shovels, sticks, and high hopes. <laughs> There's something about the medallion hunt that tends to make people forget about dignity. Whether it means sifting through garbage or crawling on the ground, they get into the spirit of the event. It's going to be a place like this, Max. Believe me. <laughs> Rick Fisher and his buddy Max McLeod have been at it for two days now. They joined dozens of searchers who moved in on the area around the Como Park Conservatory today, following hunches that they hoped would lead them to the treasure. Of course, all of these treasure hunters would like to find the medallion, but the challenge of the hunt is half the fun. You could be in one place for 15 minutes and you give up, 
And if you don't go over everything, and it just might be the spot you miss. There That's you go. right. You know. Hallelujah. Got to live dangerously here. Yes, sir. Oh, you got any bright ideas? <laughs> Most of the searchers are depending more on luck than logic. But they figure if they go over the clues often enough, they just might start to make sense. I'm looking for a sign that talks. And so far, I haven't seen any. But we're still looking. We ain't going to give up easy. They may not find the medallion, but they're having a lot of fun trying. Amy Powell, News 11, St. Paul. And so the hunt continues for that treasured bronze medallion, and at stake is a possible 3,000 bucks. Here are today's clues to help you find that cash. Clue number six, flying objects in the air. Solving this clue can get you there. And clue number seven, don't give up. Be a stubborn sort. Take your case to a higher court. Hmm. Well, this year's Winter Carnival has a brand new royal family this afternoon. The senior coronation took place this afternoon at Battle Creek Junior High School. Our own Joan Stephan was on hand to officiate. Judges had the hard task of choosing six royal members out of a whole group of qualified contestants. The new King Winter, the 29th, is Frank Sherman, and his Queen of the Northland is Marie Cowfish. Also chosen, the Prime Minister, Lady in Waiting, and Prince and Princess, of the four winds. New King was pretty friendly there, too. Yeah. I don't know if you caught the video. Got a warm welcome for Joan. We have a wonderful bunch of people here. We're surrounded by them, and they're also over by Paul Douglas, who is with us here in Rice Park as well. Paul? That's right. I'm out here with all my friends. As you can, as you can see, uh, actually, I'm out here to show you Exhibit A, and here it is, bare ground. For the first time in six years, you can see the ground, leaves and dirt and twigs. Where is the snow? We need snow. A lot of folks hoping for snow for the big Jeep I-500 snowmobile race this Sunday. And yes, there is some snow in the forecast for late tonight and tomorrow. More on that after our weather trivia quiz question. What would a 5 o'clock newscast be without a weather trivia quiz question? Let's see just how weather savvy you are. Which of the following are most damaging to area highways? A, sand and chemicals. B, bitter cold. C, extreme heat, temperatures hotter than 90 degrees or D temperatures hovering right around the freezing mark. An answer coming up in about 20 minutes, give or take. Here's Loop 11, the satellite sequence. You can see a storm, a Pacific storm, coming ashore. It weakened a little bit as it crossed the Rockies. It whipped up 70 mile an hour winds off the west coast. Two foot snows in the Sierra Nevada. That storm is now moving eastbound. It is squeezing out quite a bit of snow and rain as close to us as the western Dakotas. If you want to check the very latest weather map, show you exactly what's happening right now. There is a storm, it's intensifying but it's going to move too quickly to be able to tap much moisture from the Gulf of Mexico, and that is going to keep snow amounts down over the next 24 to 36 hours. Now, this is what we expect the weather map to look like. On radar, you can see snow already breaking out as close to us as the Black Hills, and we do expect some wet snow into the Twin Cities after midnight tonight. It will be snowing for rush hour tomorrow morning. Rush hour tomorrow may be anything but, and right now, my best guess, one to three inches of slushy snow if you're heading south, towards Dubuque, Madison, Milwaukee, Chicago, a better chance of three to six inches of wet, slushy snow. For us, though, I think about one to three. Here is the 11 outlook for tonight. It does call for a dry evening, clouding up, wet snow developing after midnight, a low of 20 to 25. Tomorrow, one to three inches of snow. Roads will be slick, a high of 29 to 34. We're looking at highs near 30 right through the weekend. A lot of folks would like to see some snow. We'll see if we can't accommodate them. John Kirsten? You're always accommodating, Paul. Well, if you, if you didn't make to any of the carnival activities today, there's still plenty going on this evening. Things that you might want to catch include ice skating at Harriet Island until 11. There's a fine art series at 8 p.m. at the Ordway starring Shirley Jones. At 7.30, there's a play festival at the Active Theater. And if snow tubing is what you're looking for, try Echo Bakken. They're still doing it in Scandia from 6.30 to 10. And, of course, you might like to just come down here to Rice Park and take a look at all the ice sculptures. There's quite a crowd of folks down here tonight. We'd like to show them to you if we can. How are you tonight? There you are. How are you guys? Wave to the camera. You're on TV. <laughs> They're a little quiet because they're a little cold, I think. I think maybe that's true. They're helping us out again, though, because we're completely surrounded here now tonight. Nice windbreaker. Blocks the wind. It sure does. Coming up on News 11 at 5, Governor Perpich takes action on an issue with President Reagan. And Twin Cityans are lending a helping hand to keep a local radio station on the air. Stay with us. At the Carnival. Winter Carnival. Winter Carnival of St. Paul. 
that decaffeinated coffee that tastes as good as regular coffee? <laughs> Lots of luck, fella. Do you have that decaffeinated that tastes as good as regular? <laughs> Grand Decaffeinated Hills Brothers. It not only tastes as good as regular coffee, it tastes better than Maxwell House regular. And we couldn't say that if it weren't true. I couldn't find any. Honey. <laughs> Decaffeinated Hills Brothers. Tastes better than regular coffee. This man is preparing the cure for the ultimate pizza emergency. Godfather's new stuffed pie pizza. And unlike the other guy's pizza, the one with the funny Italian name, you can have this one any way you want, any time you want, with six kinds of cheese. All you have to do is ask. Stop pie pizza! Godfather's new stuffed pie pizza. What are you waiting for? Winter. Ice. Freezing temperatures. Imagine, at the flick of a switch, the Instaclear windshield from Ford Glass defrosts and defogs itself electronically without wipers or scrapers in as little as two minutes. Instaclear, another quality first from Ford. The high technology of the Taurus and Sable models demanded it. You should too. So how's the future, Doctor? What I make? I might make medical school by the year 1999. We'll work with you. I don't think it'll take that long. Oh, what, I got a rich uncle or something? We'll do our best. Nope. Just a good bank. Norwest came true. We know the way. We are Norwest. Well, Dairy is recalling numerous, numerous brands of ice cream, ice milk, and sherbet this afternoon throughout 10 states. Yeah, Minnesota is among them, and several local supermarkets in the Twin Cities have pulled the products because of a bacteria that can make you sick. And we understand that pregnant women and those whose immune systems are weak are the most susceptible. The products are all Wells Dairy products with the lot number B19114. With the date January 16th this year or earlier, and if you have any of, of those products, for goodness sake, please take them back to the store. From the update desk this afternoon, thousands line up in Duluth hoping to cash in on a job. Mary Stuckey is in for Amy Powell. Mary? Well, John and Kirsten, the Lake Superior Paper Mill in Duluth opened up for job applications today. Over a thousand people lined up to apply for 300 available jobs at the plant. And these were only the ones whose names began with A through G. The plant will take applications through Saturday. One person came all the way from Wyoming to fill out his form. A lawsuit aimed at restoring the governor's control over the Minnesota National Guard was filed today by State Attorney General Skip Humphrey. Capitol correspondent Dennis Stauffer reports the lawsuit raises constitutional questions and also questions about U.S. foreign policy. Attorney General Skip Humphrey today filed a lawsuit which he says is intended to restore the governor's control over the National Guard. There is uh, and always has been the right of the governors to determine in peacetime how their National Guards will be trained. And we believe that that still exists and we believe the premise for that is in the Constitution. The lawsuit is an attempt to repeal the Montgomery Amendment, a new federal law which says governors can no longer veto guard training missions. Minnesota Guard members have been on three controversial training exercises in Central America over the past month, missions that have been heavily protested by anti-war groups. Governor Perpich had threatened to stop the exercises, but he now insists the lawsuit is based on states' rights, not questions of foreign policy. Veterans groups who oppose the lawsuit say Central America is the issue. This question has never arisen before until the people who were involved in the protests got involved and said, we don't want the Guard going and aiding the war in Nicaragua. That's the true question. So far, four other states have said they support Minnesota's lawsuit, and four are firmly opposed. Whether the issue is Central America or states' rights, it's certainly controversial, and it may take the Supreme Court to decide who's right. Dennis Stauffer, News 11 at the State Capitol. This is the first lawsuit of its kind filed by any governor. It was submitted to the federal district court in St. Paul. A two-year-old girl is recovering after getting skin grafts for burn treatment. Jennifer Teeth was badly burned in a fire that killed two of her friends. 
Yesterday, she had skin grafts done on both her hands. St. Paul Ramsey Medical Center says Jennifer's in critical condition this evening. She'll face another three or four skin grafts. And finally, KMOJ Radio is still in need of more pledges. Employees and volunteers have been holding a pledge drive during the past week in hopes of raising $50,000 by Saturday. So far, they've raised a little more than $34,000. And if you would like to help out, just call 377-6820. Back to you, John and Kirsten. All righty, okay, Mary. Thanks, thank Mary. you. Celebrating birthdays today, three people who make a living entertaining us. Author Susan Sontag is 54, actor Alan Alda, 51, and actress-singer Barbie Benton is turning 37. There were some unusual developments in the Tuesday night primetime TV ratings race. While all three networks broadcast the presidential State of the Union address, one network ran away with the ratings. 28% of the viewers are watching ABC, 16% are watching NBC, and 12% tuned into CBS. Now, the reason for the widespread in the ratings is due to the programs which preceded the president. The winner, ABC, broadcast Who's the Boss and Growing Pains. The only fair That's explanation. the only reason, yeah, right? obviously. All right, well, Jeff Passold is standing by with something I believe that's related to uh, warmer weather. Now? Yes, I hope right now. I hope it has an Psychologically, effect. yes, Jeff? I hope it does, too. Well, uh, tonight, John and Kirsten, you are going to learn the lesson of uh, Segway 102. That was a class that we took back in broadcasting school. I'm sure you probably had to take it, too. We are here at one of the big attractions of the ice sculpting here in Rice Park. It's kind of a five-masted schooner. It looks beautiful when it's lit up at night. And just one of the many beautiful ice sculptures here in Rice Park. And now you are about to see that this schooner most definitely does have something to do with our story tonight on News 11 at Sports at 5. Just why? The boat show is just getting underway in Minneapolis. Another year of the latest in watercraft on display. From the small inflatables to the average ski boats to the most expensive boat ever at the show. A 40-foot Hatteras that comes complete with a living room, full kitchen, and two bedrooms, including a master suite with bath. The price tag? Over $240,000. Do you really expect to sell any of these boats during the show? Well, we certainly wouldn't be showing the boat unless we anticipated selling some. Uh, this is a brand new boat for Hatteras Yachts, and we anticipate as a result of this show, we should sell two of them. No matter what the boat size is, the dealers will tell you this show makes a difference for everyone involved. The whole season kind of works down into how you do with these shows. Um, we do eight boat shows from January through March. And if you, if you don't do those boat shows, it, it really reflects itself in the summer business. John and Kirsten, I guess that would be a perfect break away from the Winter Carnival. You could spend a day during the Winter Carnival looking at the ice sculptures and whatnot, and then maybe head over to the boat show for some warmer thoughts. Did you? And I heard him mention, uh, what, he thought he might sell two of those $240,000 boats in our story there. So let's see, that's one for John, one for Kirsten. Who knows, maybe he'll sell a few more. Well, I think we can get a better <laughs> deal than $240,000. <laughs> Holy <laughs> smokes, that's Whoa. a lot of money, but you do get a lot of boats. Yeah, Did you, you didn't pick I'm up anything there today, Jeff? Pardon me? Did you pick up anything at all? Then? Not at $240,000, no. yeah. No, I did not. I'll take this one. In fact, I'm going to come back in June. I hear you can get a real good price on this baby yep. about June 1st. <laughs> right. Thanks, Jeff. Okay. All right, we'll see you. Well, today's 11 Country Good Neighbor has put many hours into making things nice for other people. Carl Holte dedicates himself to helping the elderly and the children. In 1971, Carl started a group called HELP, Help Elderly Live Peacefully. He brings smiles to the faces of hundreds of senior citizens who otherwise have nothing to smile about. Carl has also donated much of his time to the Servicemen Center at the Twin Cities International Airport. So we salute Carl for making Minneapolis and 11 countries such a great place to live. And still coming up on News 11 at 5, more carnival fun. And Paul Douglas is up with the answer to the trivia question, so don't go away. Attention, Twin Cities. Through Monday only, buy any new or used car at Metro Mazda and make no payment till Memorial Day. Only Metro Mazda makes you this drive today. Pay Memorial Day offer. B2000s, 119 a month. 323s, 159. 626 and RX7, you got it. No payment till Memorial Day. Only at Metro Mazda, St. Paul. The first three years of my son's life, 
He didn't have a father. He had an alcoholic. I spent half my time drinking, the other half trying to cover it up. Since then, we both recovered. You know, I can't believe I ever lived that way. But then, I never thought life could be like this. It's never too late for an alcoholic to make a new beginning. Call New Beginnings now. In the West, when you had something of value, you put your brand on it. It was more than a sign of ownership. It was a symbol of pride. At U.S. West Direct, we still believe in that tradition. For over 100 years, we've published the yellow pages people depend on in the West. So chances are the yellow pages that get used around your house are the ones with our brand on the cover. U.S. West Direct, the one that gets used. Every man she marries mysteriously dies. She married three different men. She killed all of them. That's not something you see a woman do. Which part you figure a woman isn't up to? The seduction or the murder? Alex Barnes has uncovered the truth. You don't quit your job to go chasing after some phantom. I know I'm right. But proving it could be fatal. Deborah Winger, Teresa Russell, Black Widow. She baits and she kills. Rated R. Starts Friday, February 6th at a theater near you. Back. Yeah, you know, yeah. I think he should be here all week. The rest because of the week, he should stand the right wind. here. This is great. You like this? Yeah, huh? this is terrific. It's hard to put this experience into words. You Are know? your hands glued to the desk? <laughs> I think so. No. You know, you can talk about the St. Paul Winter Carnival till you're blue in the face. And we are. We're blue in the hands, <laughs> blue in the feet. But you have to come out here and experience it. We want to show you a couple of maps, show you what's happening around the five-state region right now. Not much, no snow yet. It should arrive after midnight. Temperatures in the 20s with the winds picking up. How much snow will fall? Take a look. We're thinking one to three, a potential for two to four down towards Rochester, Austin, and Winona. Could be a little sloppy on the highways tomorrow. Now, our trivia quiz question, Johnny Kirsten, which of the following most detrimental to area highways? What do you think? Now, there's only there's one only answer. One? Only one answer. They all sound pretty I'm good. I'm going to guess D. D. Why? You had a good explanation. Because I think that the pavement it would expand and contract, and it would deteriorate it faster forth, that way. 32? I don't know. I'll say A just to be different. I'm proud of you both. Water is the only element as it freezes, it expands, it pulverizes the pavement and road crew. People get most concerned when temperatures hover right around the freezing mark. Good job. Well, thank you very much. Congratulations. Sir. You win nothing, but congratulations. <laughs> will you stand here tomorrow? I sure will. I can't move. All right, move. good deal. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being with us. We want to thank everybody here, too, and we'll show you a shot of them as we depart. We'll see you again at 6 o'clock, and have a good night. Have a good night, everybody.